Anyway, uh, so yeah, my time period is uh, Mycenaean Greece. Uh, this is right around the time of the, uh, the famous late Bronze Age collapse. Uh, so uh, everything is kind of going to hell at this point. The palaces are, have already been burned down uh, in, in the Argolid, which you can see up here. Uh, so the famous site of Mycenae. Uh, I work uh, primarily in the uh, northwestern Peloponnese in Achaia. Uh, at cemeteries that span about uh, uh, 600 years uh, of use. Uh, most of the, uh, the rock cut uh, tombs uh, are used quite late and they're cleaned thoroughly, so uh, it's only by a stroke of luck uh, that we know that they were built uh, early from uh, chance finds and uh, secondary uh, uh, use pits. Uh, but essentially what I do is I do uh, photogrammetric uh, modeling and energetics modeling after uh, the, uh, uh, the methodology from Elliot Abrams uh, updated slightly uh, into a more comparative format. So I use a range of rates since we can never know how long it takes somebody to build something. Humans move at, uh, uh, at a fairly average rate depending on materials. So if you know vaguely your tools, the material you're cutting into, uh, and the amount of material being moved, you can uh, sort of make a, 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 an educated guess uh, as to how long it took to, to build something. Uh, but if you're uncomfortable with energetics, that's fine. You can also just use volumetrics, which uh, with photogrammetry, you just uh, uh, you go in there, you take a bunch of photos uh, uh, that are georeferenced uh, with a total station. We're too cheap for a 3D scanner, uh, although if you have a 3D scanner, it's much easier to just do that. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, this is a relatively inexpensive way to uh, preserve the tombs, and I'll get down to the tomb models themselves. So you can see the cemeteries there. Uh, Vudni, there's estimated a, uh, about 150 tombs, uh, 80 of which have been excavated over the last uh, century. Uh, most of them uh, follow this uh, 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 beehive patterns. So these are not uh, uh, the famous uh, Tolos tombs, although I did do a Tolos tomb uh, near Athens uh, that are, are, are built tombs, uh, so shored up with rock. These are, are strictly rock cut into uh, uh, the local, they call it marl, but it's uh, camellia. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a very soft uh, limestone, very friable. You can almost scratch it with your hands if you wanted to. Um, but in any case, they had a, a very set idea of uh, how these tombs should look like. Uh, bearing in mind, these tombs are closed uh, most of the time, uh, or so we think. So the entrance passages over here uh, are always wedge-shaped, uh, wedge uh, but filled in to where you cannot see them in line with the slope. So you can't see them until uh, either uh, somebody digs them up or the roof collapses of the chamber and opens a hole. Uh, so some of these, the roof did collapse uh, and they were uh, uh, reconstructed slightly, uh, but you can see the, the differences in scale here. Uh, so the Maniti Tolos, this one is not rock cut, uh, but uh, uh, rock built, uh, 22 times the size uh, of the median. So somebody very important uh, was, uh, was buried here, we can't really call him a king, but uh, uh, someone uh, near Athens, not necessarily a part uh, of, of the uh, uh, late Bronze Age Athens, but certainly within uh, on their radar as a, as a person of interest. Um, but uh, so my trick is uh, to just uh, take the volumetric measurements and uh, plug them into SPSS uh, just to try to see if what kind of spatial patterns, because all of these tombs are empty by the time that I get to them. Uh, I have no uh, uh, solid chronological data. Uh, most of our chronology is built on ceramic phases that last several centuries. Uh, whereas I argue that these tombs are built in a matter of, uh, of days, essentially. No, uh, even the largest ones, they don't uh, uh, take really lar uh, more than a month uh, to build uh, if they're building these as, as quickly as possible. So, which I imagine uh, for a tomb, that's, uh, uh, that's essentially what you're doing. Uh, but the, the, uh, the, the numbers up there are meaningless, they're just a, it's a, it's a relative index. So I played around with it and just used the playful eye-catching phrase T-Rex. Uh, you know, no better controversial scale than uh, for an archaeological conference is to use an actual T-Rex. But uh, it's, yeah, the, essentially the trick is uh, flattening out the measurements, uh, taking your medians across 12 different uh, uh, dimensions. So it's a tripartite thing, you take 
each uh, each to its own, the dromos, the stomi, and the threshold, which is uh, blocked with the uh, usually river stones and the uh, burial chamber itself. Uh, more often than not, the remains are just left on the floor or dug into the uh, 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 into uh, pits. But uh, the the color is uh, red. Uh, uh, it's mirrored across the diagonal, so really you only need uh, one uh, half of that. But the red means that they are uh, are very close uh, in measurements, and these are tombs spread out over hundreds of kilometers uh, over hundreds of years. So the argument is uh, that they're not looking at these things and they're not measuring them, but they're building them from a set, uh, a cultural ideal <laughs> of how a tomb should look like. So it's, a, it's a, some way, some mechanism of uh, collective memory that I use in the manner of uh, uh, Paul Connerton and uh, the, uh, the memory studies of the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. So trying to br bring that back a little bit, uh, but uh, also diving a bit deeper into the, uh, the psychology of it. Um, so yeah, that's essentially it. Uh, and if, you're, uh, if you want to, to read more in depth on it, uh, I don't wanna cut into your coffee break here. So uh, just uh, send me an email. Uh, I just, I use my old uh, email address up there, but I'm affiliated with uh, Leiden University in the Netherlands. Uh, and it's, uh, we're a, a, an ERC funded project and there are several PhDs that are finishing up this year. Uh, based not only on the tombs, which is what I work on, but also on the fortifications and on the, the settlements themselves, how people lived. So we're studying how people lived and how they died uh, during the late Bronze Age. So, thank you.